this Kiwi Dream renovation has been anything but a dream run. Whenever you start opening up floors and walls on a house built in the 1950s, you're bound to run into some unexpected problems. But it feels right now like everything we touch presents only problems, heartache and additional costs. What needs to happen is we have to dig out the back and damp proof right around this wall. That's what? the only way. He's, he's gonna come Thank in goodness I have a strong team led by Refresh Renovations to help me get through. We've been tackling one room at a time and right now we're demolishing the downstairs second bedroom. The wall between this bedroom and the next door bathroom needs to come down because the new wall is planned to be in a slightly different position to accommodate a nearby ream hot water cylinder and a new wardrobe. Oh, yeah. Nice. Well done, boys. But right now, with it all open like this, I'm wondering whether we should abandon those plans and instead create another ensuite. It certainly worked fabulously well with the upstairs master bedroom. I'll talk to Dean, my architect, to see what implications there would be to making this change. No doubt to change plans now will result in additional costs, something we can ill afford. We're currently well over budget on the whole renovation and with all the complications mounting up, I've not been able to make any savings yet. And then there are those little opportunities that a girl gets tempted by along the way. Pascal, my landscape designer from Natural Habitats, has lured me outside to talk about his plans for the front lawn area and to tempt me with another creative proposition. So this is our formal lawn up through here. And what I'm trying to do is give a little bit of flat lawn so that you've got some space around the house, you can walk around the house. And, um, and then from there, we've got some sleeper stairs that come through here and just bank side to side and rolling down onto a, a lawn where, you know, maybe in the future someone might build a, a pool. That's complicated now, but it could happen. And then as you come down through here, what I'd really like to do is uh, to put what I call sanctum, the outdoor room. <gasps> Oh, it's beautiful. You can imagine yourself sitting out there, having a glass of wine and, and sitting in those bean bags or something comfortable and just being yourself. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Can I say yes again? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> say yes. That's wonderful. Thank you, Pascal. It's like a garden sculpture, isn't it? With all of the action that we've got going on up here, the outdoor rooms, you know, it's, it's, it's good for, you know, having people over and, and having functions and things like that. But then you can come down here, you can come down the stairs and go to a little space where you can be yourself, read a book and do what you want to do, and you're just away from the whole wide world. Oh, I love it, Pascal. It's mm. wonderful. I'm currently running at $58,200 over budget. Pascal's fabulous sanctum will cost an additional $5,000. And I know our finance guy, Mike Pirro, is going to freak out when he sees me adding it to the budget. But I want it so badly. So let's leave it in the plans for now. Meanwhile, back to my troublesome underfloor in the main living area. We were waiting on the results of a moisture test before we could embark on doing the whole job again for a second time after my rogue guy botched the first job. Max Tomlinson from Seeker is using a Seeker Tramex device that measures the moisture content in a concrete slab. We're hoping for moisture content results below 4%. And it seems that something to do with this floor is finally going my way. Right. Here we've got 1.5%. Oh, brilliant. Here we've got 1.5%. Over there we've got 2%. So from what our tests show us, that there's no moisture issue. Because of the, the state of the concrete, we're going to recommend that it be, um, be epoxy tie coated. What it is, it's an, a special epoxy material that goes on and it consolidates the surface of this concrete. You can see it's very undulating. It's not as strong as we would like, but it's, it's the best we can do with what we've got. And uh, that is going to bond the new slab over the new surface. The screen we're going to be using is self-smoothing. We call it pour on floors, seeker pour on floors, which means, just like it sounds, it pours on and it, it's very level and flows out very nicely. It would be an ideal surface for the timber and the, the warm-up. Okay, we have a new plan. 
I have full confidence in Max and the team, so I'm definitely not interfering this time. First, an epoxy coat to seal over the old rough concrete. And while it's still tacky, the first dose of Seeker Pour on Floors levelling compound is applied. Then the ever patient guys from Warm Up are back to install a new system of underfloor heating. Then another Seeker epoxy coating. And finally, another layer of Seeker Pour on Floors levelling compound. Underfloor preparation mark to complete. This time, hopefully, with no nasty surprises. After all we've been through with this floor, this is the best I've seen it looking. But I am so nervous because I really need the next bit to go to plan. I've been burnt so badly here. We have a three mil tolerance to get these floorboards on just right. And I cannot afford any more cost for this or hold ups. After the break, oh no, would you believe it? More floor problems, this time in the bedroom. My kitchen designer, Mal Corboy, sweeps me away from it all and takes me shopping. Those are pretty. They are, do you want one? And upstairs in the living room, success at last. The bank manager may not like it, but I love it. Keep it, keep it.